the tabernacle of David was deconstructed. It was taken down when the Ark of the Covenant was moved into the Temple of Solomon, into the Holy of Holies. Now, David's tabernacle was the holiest place on planet Earth. It housed the Ark of the Covenant. And so it did not collapse, it did not fall down, it was deliberately deconstructed. And Solomon had built a stone chamber on the Temple Mount specifically to house the remains of the tabernacle that David, his father, had built. Isaiah prophesied that the Messiah will sit on the throne in the tabernacle of David, but he prophesied this at the time that the ark was still in the temple of Solomon. And the tabernacle was stored in the stone chamber on the temple mount. Isaiah said, in mercy shall the throne be established. And the throne, the Ark of the Covenant, the throne is the mercy seat. In mercy shall the throne be established. And he, and he, the Messiah, shall sit upon it in truth, in the tabernacle of David. So while the tabernacle of David was stored in the Temple Mount, the Ark of the Covenant was in the Holy of Holies, Isaiah said that he, the Messiah, would sit on the throne of mercy in the tabernacle of David. And he would judge from that seat. He would seek justice and righteous judgment. And he would encourage righteousness. And righteousness would dominate. Amos said that in that day of great trouble, I will raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen, that had been deconstructed, it was broken down. I will raise up the tabernacle of David and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up its ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old, that they, Israel, may possess the remnant of Edom and of all of the heathen, which are called by my name, Seth Yehovah, that does this. Now, James, in the book of Acts, quotes the prophet Amos concerning the tabernacle of David. And he said, to this uh, words, these words agree with the prophet, as it is written by the prophet Amos. After this, I will return and I will build again the tabernacle of David which has fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, that the residual men might seek after Yehovah, and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, Seth, and now we can go right back to what it says in Amos, because he's quoting Amos, Seth, Yehovah, who does all these things. These are the words of Yehovah as given to the prophet Amos, that the tabernacle of David would be rebuilt. The words of Yehovah to Isaiah, that the Messiah would sit on the throne, on the seat of mercy, on the Ark of the Covenant, and he would judge from that, and he would sit in the tabernacle of David. Now, when James quotes Amos, that all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, they are going to be seeking after Yehovah, who does all these things. Then James added, known only to Yehovah are all of his works from the beginning of the world. It is impossible for us to begin to imagine the divine tapestry the Almighty is weaving together and how he has told the end of time from the very beginning. Not only are the feasts of the Lord prophetic shadow pictures of good things to come, the words of the prophets that Yeshua said 
none of those words will pass away. The commandments in the Torah about how the Ark of the Covenant is to be brought forth, all those words, they will not pass away. They are true and will be true to the end of time. Not one of those words are going to pass away. Zechariah the prophet said, it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations that came against Jerusalem to fight against Jerusalem, everyone that is left of those nations shall come up year after year to worship the king, Yehovah Tsevaot, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And it shall be that whosoever will not come up to the feast, all of the families of the earth who do not come up to Jerusalem to worship the king, Yehovah Tsevaot, even upon them there shall be no rain. He said, this is going to be the punishment of all nations who do not come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. In that day, there shall be no more Canaanite, no more the sons of Canaan, no more Sodomites in the house of Yehovah Tsevaot. In the time of Jeremiah, the houses of the, of the Sodomites were actually on the Temple Mount until Jeremiah and King Yoshea cleared them all out. But he's speaking of the future time. He's speaking of a time when the Messiah reigns upon the earth for a thousand years. And who is the Messiah who's reigning upon the earth? What is his name? What is he called? Yehovah Tsevaot, Yehovah, the commander of his armies. And who are his armies? his priests and kings who have served him, who will in their resurrected bodies be brought forth and they will live and reign with Messiah upon the earth for a thousand years in which Yeshua will rule the earth with a rod of iron. The whole earth will be filled with the knowledge of Yehovah. They won't need to teach each other because we are the priests and kings who will be teaching we will be exercising authority and judgment and justice. We will be teaching people what Isaiah taught, that during the millennial reign of the Messiah, those who refuse to eat that which the Almighty has created to be received with thanksgiving, because it is sanctified by the word of God, set apart by the word of God, but those who continue to eat abominations, it says they will be executed. Why? Because the world will be filled with the knowledge of Yehovah. He says, don't eat the garbage trucks. Don't eat the abominations. I created them to keep the clean animals clean. And those who refuse to obey the commandments, they are going to pay the price immediately. This is the millennial reign of the Messiah. These are the words that will be fulfilled. Yeshua said, they're not gonna be done away with. He will fulfill all these things. He will sit upon the Ark of the Covenant, which is the throne of God, and he will sit upon it, and he will judge the earth. As Isaiah said, he will sit upon it and in mercy, withheld merited judgment, and he will encourage righteousness. He will seek out and establish justice and judgment in the earth. Malachi tells us that from the rising of the sun, even to the going down of the same, my name shall be great. My name, Yehovah, shall be great among the Gentiles. And in every place, incense shall be offered to my name and a pure offering for my name shall be great among the heathen. Thus saith Yehovah Tsevaot. Now, I've heard someone say that, oh, don't you realize that the Bible says the ark will be forever forgotten? And then they quote Jeremiah. But they don't quote the whole thing, they just take out a little numbered soundbite because they don't want to believe the testimony of the scripture and what I'm going to be sharing with you in these next segments. 
In Jeremiah 3.16, it says, they shall no more say, the ark of the covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall it be done anymore. Well, that seems to say that it's going to be forgotten. It's never going to be remembered again. But all we had to do is back up two verses. In verse 14, it's speaking of the time of the millennial reign of the Messiah upon the earth. And he says that he, the, the Messiah, I will take of you one of a city, two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. It's just going to be a remnant. It's not going to be the whole morass of humanity. It's gonna be one of an entire city, two of a family, but that's going to turn into an innumerable multitude. But from that remnant, I will bring you to Zion. What is Zion, the city of David? That's where the tabernacle of David sat. And it says, and I will give you pastors according to my heart. They are going to feed you with true knowledge and true understanding. These are going to be my shepherds, not the ones that you choose. They are going to be the ones that I choose. And it shall come to pass, when you are multiplied and increased in the land, in those days, saith Yahweh, they shall no more say, the ark of the covenant of Yehovah, neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done anymore, because at that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of Yehovah. Jerusalem is a throne, and all of the nations shall be gathered to it. All the nations are going to be required to go up to the Feast of Tabernacles every year. And if the nations don't go up to the feast, it's not gonna rain on them for the whole year. That is not an extended weather forecast. It's a death sentence. It's a sentence that has passed because righteous judgment will be done. And they are going to call the throne Jerusalem, the throne of Yehovah. The nations are going to be gathered to it. And the name of Yehovah is going to be brought to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk anymore after the imagination of their evil hearts. In those days, the house of Judah will walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north into all, into all of the inheritance that I have given to their fathers. That is a promise of what is going to happen when the Messiah reigns. Because when he is seated in Jerusalem, the Ark of the Covenant is his seat, but the whole of Jerusalem will be his throne. It will be his throne room. This is where his priests and kings will bring the hard cases to him in Jerusalem. It is not the throne, it is the misos, as in heaven. The misos in heaven, this is where all the angels are. This is where the sea of fire and glass, the 24 elders are. All the angels are in the throne room of heaven. And upon the earth, Jerusalem will be the throne room. But the throne itself will be the Ark of the Covenant. But why will we not be coming up to visit the Ark of the Covenant? Because Yehovah Tzavah, the Messiah himself, Yeshua, is sitting upon the throne judging the nations. He's a big deal, not the seat that he's sitting on. That's why it's not going to be the big deal. That's why it's not going to come to mind. They're not gonna be thinking, oh, we're gonna go up and see the Ark of the Covenant. No, it's Yeshua sitting upon the throne. Now I want to take you to the greatest no man's land deal in all the Bible. We go back to the book of Jeremiah, which was written by Baruch the scribe of Jeremiah. 
it records that, Baruch records this, that the word of Yehovah came to Jeremiah and told him, saying, Behold, Hanamiel, the son of Shalom, your uncle, shall come unto you and say, Buy my field in Enertot, for the right of redemption is yours to buy it. So, Hanamiel, my uncle's son, came to me in the court of the prison according to the word that Yehovah had said to me. Now, Jeremiah, at this point, is in the palace in a prison in Jerusalem in Zedekiah's palace. That's where he's being held. He's not being held in the palatial quarters, I will tell you that. But he is being held, and so he has some freedom of movement to be able to go out into the courtyard. And so that's when Hanamiel, his cousin, came in to see him in the court of the prison according to what Yehovah had said to him. And Hanamiel said this, I pray thee, Yermiahu, Buy my field, which is an antidote, in the jurisdiction of Benjamin. For the right to purchase the inheritance is yours, and the redemption is yours. Buy it for yourself. And when he said that, Jeremiah said, then I knew, I knew this is the word of Yehovah. Yehovah spoke it to him, and then his cousin came in and said the exact same words. And so, he said, I bought the field of Hanamiel, my uncle's son. There was an inner tote, and I weighed him the money, 17 shekels of silver. And I subscribed, I signed the deeds, and I sealed it. And I took witnesses and weighed him the money. I weighed it to Hanamiel, and I weighed it in the balances. And so I took the deeds of the purchase, both that which was sealed according to the law and the custom, and the custom was, and the law was, is that you signed the, the deeds, and then one of them was kept in the hall of records. Now that hall of records is going to be destroyed. As a matter of fact, the remains of the hall of records is still being uncovered in the city of David today. So we know exactly where that was done. And so that was the custom at that time that it was sealed with the seal and then kept in the hall of records. And so he said that they took the deeds of the purchase, both that which was sealed and that which was open, that which belonged to Jeremiah. And I gave the evidences of the purchase to Baruch, my scribe, the son of Neriah, in the sight of Hanamiel, my uncle's son, and in the presence of the witnesses that were, they also subscribed the scroll. They signed it. They authorized it. They were the ones that signed for the purchase. And before all the Jews that sat in the court of the prison, where I was being held by King Zedekiah, then I charged Baruch before them all. Thus saith Yehovah Sebaot, Thus saith Yehovah, the God of Israel. Take these evidences, Baruch, this evidence of the purchase, both that which is sealed and the evidence which is open, both of these title deeds, and put them in an earthen vessel. Seal it up so that it may continue many days. For thus saith Yehovah Sebaot, the God of Israel, houses and fields and vineyards shall again be possessed in this very parcel of land. Now, when I delivered the purchase, the evidence of the purchase to Baruch, then I prayed to Yehovah and I said, Ah, Lord Yehovah, before, behold, you have made heaven and earth by your great power and an outstretched arm. There is nothing that is too hard for thee. You've shown your loving kindness to thousands and you repay the iniquity of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them. The great and mighty God, Yehovah Sebaot, Yehovah Sebaot is your name, great in counsel and mighty in work. Your eyes are open to all the ways of the sons of men to give to everyone according to his ways, according to the fruit 
of their doing. You have set signs and wonders in the land of Egypt, even unto this day, and in Israel, and among other men. And you have made for yourself a name just as you have done this very day. You have brought forth your people Israel out of the land of Egypt with signs and wonders and with a strong hand and an outstretched arm so that the entire world will know that your name is Yehovah. You brought them out with great terror so the whole world would know your name. And you have given the sons of Israel this land which you swore to give their fathers, a land flowing with milk and honey, and you now have promised that fields and vineyards are going to be brought in this parcel of land once again in the future. Even though we're going into exile for 70 years, according to the word of Moses and according to the revelation that you have given me, and even though this land, this land, which is no man's land, littered with dead bodies, worthless land that I've just paid 17 shekels of silver for this, you are able to fulfill your promise. And so Jeremiah then sends Baruch out. While he is praying, he sends Baruch out to bury that earthen vessel in the very parcel of land that he bought from Hannah Miel's cousin. Why did he bury it? so that it would remain a long, long time. That earthen vessel is still buried in that parcel of land. That earthen vessel has not yet been revealed, but we're going to see the rest of the detail of what Jeremiah does and what he hides in that parcel of land and why the Almighty instructed him to buy that land during the siege of Nebuzaradan surrounding the city of Jerusalem just before Israel is carried away into captivity and the temple is completely destroyed. 